Warning. Possible triggers in this video include, a kneecap dislocation image using bones only, and post-surgery knee and stitches. If these things tend to bother you, consider looking away and only listening to it. I hope this video will be helpful if you are considering this surgery. First, a little about the surgery, then one patient's experience and advice to help you be prepared. Then some research on the expected outcome. MPFL reconstruction surgery is often recommended for patients struggling with knee dislocations. The MPFL, or medial patellofemoral ligament, is responsible for a great deal of kneecap stabilization and helps protect your knee. It can become stretched during dislocations and then leads to more instability. This ligament runs from the inner edge of the patella across to the inner part of the femur. The surgery is usually an outpatient surgery allowing you to go home the same day. It is done under general anesthesia, with possibly only two small incisions. Confirm with your surgeon and watch our videos about questions to ask your doctor and preparing for surgery. Here is one patient telling her experience. Once it was decided that I was going to get surgery, I was sent out to get labs. They told me I was going to need a brace that looks like that, crutches, and those items were given to me after surgery. One of the things that I purchased that it is extremely important is a bath chair. OMG, you will need that for sure. Now moving on to the instructions, the day before surgery, I was told not to eat or drink anything after 9 p.m. and uh, to remove all jewelry, everything out. Okay, and also the day of surgery, take a full shower, wash your hair and your body and do not apply any lotion or anything on your body. Have those painkillers ready to go. My surgery was at 7 and I was out of the hospital by noon or so. It is an in and out uh, surgery. This is how I looked after they got me out. Um, you can see bandages, you can see the brace on. And I was a little out of it, honestly, when um, they got me out and my husband was there to pick me up. I was like, oh, this is not too bad. This is good. You know, this is not going to be that hard. I got home and I do have stairs. I thought I was going to struggle. No, nope, I was good. But let me tell you, once the anesthesia wore off, I could feel a lot. A week after, the scars look like this. I'm very swollen. I can start seeing bruising on my knee. It was difficult to get in and out of bed. Going to the restroom was very difficult. You definitely will be needing someone to assist you at least for the first week. Here's a picture exactly a week after, after surgery. I went to the doctor and they checked out the stitches. Um, I was thinking they were going to remove them that day, but no, they did not, so... Week two post-op. At this point, I was able to move a little bit better with the crutches. You kind of get used to. It is hard to get in and out of the car and um, yeah, showering, it's, it's a little hard still because you have to make sure that you cover the leg, okay? You can't get the incision wet, but this is what we have so far. Some of the things that I was doing on week two was um, trying to, you know, to cook, and I do have three kids on my own, so I was really, really trying, and I could feel that my knee would get exhausted, meaning that it would start hurting. One of the things that, and I used to be like, oh, they always tell me that all the time, to put ice and elevate your leg or your knee. And believe it or not, that does help. On week two, I stopped taking my painkillers because they make me feel kind of weird. So again, you know, I just iced my knee as much as I could. Okay, so I'm here at the doctor's office. It is exactly two weeks since my surgery and I'm pretty sure they're about to take this out right now. So, I'll be right back and let you know what they said. Okay, I was filming and I had to stop because um, when he was removing those stitches, it kind of hurt. It felt uncomfortable. So, I decided just, you know, to film a little bit and then I stopped just because I did have to take a deep breath. After he removed all of them, this is what the incision looks like. It does look kind of gross in my opinion, but nevertheless, I have to keep it that way. He went ahead and put on some tape. I asked if I could get that uh, area wet and he said um, 
that I cut just not to scrub not to scrub the incision area and those tapes will fall off on their own. I asked about physical therapy and they told me um, that I'm not ready for that yet. Outcome seems generally positive, decreasing regular dislocations. Since there are many other factors in dislocations as talked about in another video you can click on at the end of this, a future dislocation is always possible. Here are the results of some research. New research suggests that for young patients who experience recurring dislocation of the kneecap, reconstructive surgery is an effective treatment option. Among 90 physically active patients undergoing surgery, nearly all were able to return to the court or field in just under 9 months on average with fewer than a handful reporting recurring instability. Rehab without surgery is the current standard of care for those undergoing patellar dislocation for the first time but for repeat sufferers the path to recovery is less clear while there is some consensus on taking the surgical route for ligament reconstruction. Recommendations on additional bony realignment are mixed on top of the variety of anatomical criteria for making that decision. There's the possibility that adding such treatment to the surgical menu could increase the risk of complication. No patient underwent any bone restructuring suggesting that favorable outcomes with a less extensive procedure are possible. The research team cites a few limitations of their work. First, the results apply mostly to the short period following surgery although the team followed patients for up to four years after treatment, most of the outcomes reported were for the first two years of follow-up. Also the study comes from a single high-volume surgeon with a special interest in the patellofemoral joint. The results therefore may not translate to all surgeons. Still, the results are encouraging.